what we are going to use let me disturb channel. this is the variable resistor these are the cells this is the ammeter and this is our fixed resistor our connection whenever we connect we are supposed to first connect them to connect a loop we will connect the positive end of the ammeter to the positive end of the cell from the negative end of the cell we connect the variable resistor from the variable resistor we connect the fixed resistor then from the fixed resistor we go to the negative end of the ammeter then since we want to connect or to determine the current drop or the voltage drop across the resistor we are going to place the, res the voltmeter across the fixed resistor we can as well as place it whenever we can place it I'm going to explain why now let us do the connection now we have connected all the apparatus and the voltmeter across the fixed resistor now once this has been connected we are going to vary the variable resistor and determine the change in the ammeter and voltmeter then record the readings for verification of ohm's law now let us see what will happen let us go now to the lab in the lab we said i'm going now to do let me start with a switch i place a switch I connect the first wire, I bring the second wire, I connect the third wire, let me make it at right angle, now I want to connect the cell, the first cell, the second cell, I want to use two cells, then I connect the fixed resistor after the fixed resistor we need a variable resistor uh, let me connect the ammeter at this position the ammeter from then I can add a wire down I add another wire I want to connect I can place the last wire then I connect I my resistor I want to continue with the connection with wires I ensure that the connection is tight once I've connected the wires now I've made a series loop I can now comfortably bring the ammeter and the ammeter I can also try to connect it very nice I also connect the ammeter very nice now I have made I can as well as check whether my connection is right I switch on 
I can come just and switch on. You see the current is flowing. That is the flow of electrons. And the voltmeter here is indicating 18 volts. We have 18 volts. And the current is 100, 1.80 uh, amperes. If I want to determine the convectional current, which is shown by the flow of the red arrows, so it means I can show. That is the layman way of drawing. I can change now to the real circuit, whereby I have the ammeter, the voltmeter, and... cells and the switch now the value of the current i'm using now i can now vary the resistance of the wire as i collect the values if i increase the variable resistor now the current can be established as 1.1 and the voltage is 11.09. If I go further, it can go to 0 0.85, 8 0.46, 7.42, 0 0.74. Then as I vary the resistance, the current and the voltage, even the rate of flow of the uh, let me place electrons is very very slow as I increase the resistance so remember the resistance tries to resist the flow of electrons I can also vary the resistance of the cell you see currently the cells have zero resistance if I increase the resistance of the cell that meaning that the cells cannot as well as uh, resist now, once you have obtained these values in a table, you draw a graph, which I'm going to draw. And then from the graph, you are going to determine. Uh, from the experiment, a value of 1.0 voltage, the current determined was 0 0.2 amperes for a value of 2.0 volts the current also increased to 0 0.4 the voltage of 3.0 the value was 0 0.6 amperes now from this data we can draw a graph and from the graph we will determine whether it is obeying the law. Now that is the graph that is drawn of potential difference in voltage against current in time if you examine and analyze the graph it is a straight line that is passing through the origin this shows that the current is directly proportional to the applied potential difference meaning the voltage divided by current is a constant. This relationship is what we term as Ohm's law. It is named after a famous physicist, Jorg Simon Ohm, who established it. So it is states as Ohm's law. So if we get the constant, So by getting the slope, that's the change in voltage against the change in uh, current, 
for this case here is three point to me just uh, my change in y axis here it is 3.5 subtract 1.5 that is here then the change in x axis we have 0 0.7 subtract 0 0.3 which i'm having them here which is 2 divided by 0 0.4 and we get 5 ohms therefore for this graph 5 ohms is our constant <clears throat> it means the current is passing through the conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its ends provided that the temperature of the conductor and its physical conditions remain constant. So the physical conditions of this experiment were constant. Let us establish what is happening here. Therefore, what we have just been shown is that, uh, sorry for this uh, error of that the graph is a straight line that is passing through the origin showing that the current is directly proportional to the applied potential difference. So this relation is what we call Ohm's law. It is named after the famous physicist George Simon Ohm. Now what does this tell us? Now before I conclude, in this channel, Bongo Machere Fred, uh, I have more than 1,000 physics videos well explained. So subscribe to Bongo Machere Fred Educational Experience YouTube. In this YouTube, you'll find all the physics videos for free. Just tell a friend, share this to a friend. You can as well as find the same videos on my Facebook page. It's a very big page with over half a million followers. It is called Mombasa Driving Machere Fred. Also, follow it for videos. Now, let me just conclude this lesson. We will then say that, that Ohm's law is obeyed by most of the metals and some non-metals like carbon. Conductors that obey Ohm's law, we call them ohmic conductors. Therefore, from Ohm's law, we have a constant. This constant, we can call it the resistance. So the slope that we found as five is now our resistance of the conductor that we were testing. Therefore, resistance can be defined as the ratio of potential difference across the ends of a conductor to the current that is passing through it. And that, that's why when we found that uh, slope, we gave the SI unit ohm, which is now the SI unit of resistance. Thank you for watching. Thank you for you are going to subscribe and follow. Just click the bell notification for the next video on capacitors.